Hi, and welcome everyone to the Agile Coaching Ethics session by Shane Hassel. Over to you, Shane. Good day, folks. Welcome. Thank you for, for joining us. Um, like I said, I'm Shane Hasty. I'm the Director of Community Development for IC Agile. And I have been one of the lead uh, part of the team on or leading the team who have come up with the Code of Ethical Conduct for Agile Coaching under the auspices of the Agile Alliance. Now, at the moment, I'm seeing lots and lots of turned off audios and no cameras. So if we could, I'm going to invite you to please turn on your audio, turn on your camera as much as possible. This is a workshop, not a lecture. And a workshop is about interaction and engagement. I, I want to see you. I want to hear from you. I want to, to explore with you. So, um, yeah, welcome. The first thing I'm going to do is share in the chat a link to a mural board. And this is where we're going to do all of our work. So please join that mural board. See people coming into the mural board. Is anyone having trouble accessing the mural board? And again, just a reminder, please turn on your audio, turn on your video. Hey, Shane, can you hear me? Ravi. I can hear you, yes, at last, somebody talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome folks. Kunjan, welcome. Nice to see you. Same here, Shane. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'll put the mural board link in the in the chat window again. That's in the chat. Are we supposed to open that and get there? Yes, please. Please access that mural board. That is what we're going to be using to work through. I will share my screen occasionally, but not much, because you are going to be doing the work inside the, the mural board as we go through. And just a reminder that you have signed up for a workshop, which is a collaborative activity where we do work together. This is not me lecturing at you. This is a workshop where we're going to explore the work that has been done and come up with some, some thoughts and ideas of what more could be done, should be done, and how we make these the, the ethics of Agile coaching real. So let me get in there. Yes, good to see 15 people in the mural board. So. I'll just reshare the link so that everyone's got it. All right, let me share my screen. So you can all see where we are. So this is the, we're gonna start and we're going to, actually I'm gonna put you straight into breakout rooms in small groups and I want you to talk about and then we'll come back and I, I want to hear from each group what have you seen in terms of agile coaching ethical behavior so I want you to think about it I'm, I'm going to go through the the code itself in in detail when we come back but to start with 
just look at this image up in the in the top left hand corner of the um, of the mural board. The the areas confidentiality, information security, acting with in my ability, introspection and continuing development, navigating conflict of interest, ensuring value in the relationship, social responsibility, uh, agreeing on boundaries, resisting the abuse of power and responsibility to the profession. So I want you to think about those in the, in the broad topic areas. And again, you can all access that. And then we're gonna put you into breakout rooms. So we have 21 people. We'll, we'll create four breakout rooms. All right, Shane, I'll just do that. And you will get randomly allocated to a breakout room. And you'll have in that breakout room, uh, we'll give it seven minutes. And I want you to explore what have you seen in terms of ethical behaviors and unethical behaviors? So if you think about these topics, what are situations that you have seen um, working well and or not so well? Welcome back, folks. All right. What I'd like to get now, thank you. I, Hope that that was a, a useful experience. I see that some uh, post-it notes appeared on there and I realized that I had not layered things properly on the board so that the, they were all ending up behind the image. So I did go in and change that uh, just a few moments ago. All right, what I'd like to do is hear from each room, what are some examples? What are some things that you came up with? So starting with room number one, uh, who would like to talk for room number one? I think it was us, if I remember correctly, <laughs> Shane. But yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. Uh, yeah. So uh, we did, I mean, uh, I wouldn't say we had exact examples, but yes, we were discussing around uh, managing the boundaries and giving the respect to you know the respect to our teams so we did come across uh, probably different opinions right few of us had an opinion that uh, with respect comes value right so if we are respecting then we are uh, you know uh, we in turn get some value around it and a few of us had an opinion that uh, it also coincides with managing or respecting the boundaries as well right so uh, while we don't overstep any boundaries we respect each other as well and maintain that relationship so i think that was one of the discussions we had thank you very much so room two had amal and anirban and sadish and sudashan so who would like to talk to them? Um, so, hi, Sudarshan here. So, in my opinion, uh, so when we were discussing uh, about this uh, situation, I think where we were, uh, the key point which we came out is that navigating conflict of interest. So, uh, you know, one of the participants has, you know, in my group had actually encountered an issue wherein um, you know the the agile coach was new and he was trying to uh, massage the ego of uh, his clients and you know changing the way he was delivering his uh, content and it really was not the right way to do it for you know he was not really st sticking to the scope and being neutral in his uh, work ethic and scope he was trying to be partial just to please a certain you know group of people which would have given him business in the future which Okay, I understand, you know, you're, you have to be a businessman as well. But um, yeah, that was not the right way to do it. You know, you have to be neutral and you have to say the right things, not just you know, be right to the person who you think is, you know, will help you in the future. You have to be neutral and do your job correctly. I think that's the one key point which we think uh, came across in our discussion. Thank you very much. So room three had Atulia and Manjuanath. Forgive me if I'm mangling your names. <laughs> oh, hi, hi Shane. It's Manjunath. Okay. 
so we in our group we talked about uh, resist the abuse of power so we discussed in a both way as a agile coach you can enforce your ideas on a team that is a one way of unethical things the other way if somebody with a waterfall mindset or say command and control comes and enforces his idea uh, a superior boss or something like that so how do you resist on that that's a topic we discussed on that and uh, say that we have to be ethical on our front first then we can able to resist Thank you very much. And room four had Ravi and Bharat and Dinadalio. I'm mangling your names. Pradeep and Santosh. Okay, right. I think I'll go. Uh, I'm Dean Dial here. Um, right. So we, uh, sorry, we just joined a minute or two late, so we didn't get the proper instruction. But yeah. And then we went on to that Miro board, those nine uh, ethics that has been put up. And then we were starting to discuss on the first one. Uh, uh, so the confidentiality and information security, right? So um, so as a agile coaches, so um, uh, uh, we have to maintain the integrity and uh, the, uh, the information about any person. Uh, so to, uh, not to share anything bad about others with, within the team so it is both um the, the upstream and then the uh, that at the team level as well right if you have um something uh, uh discussed at the upstream and something you know something about bad about them then don't so it is it uh, the uh, we have a tendency to spread the bad about others right so that we as agile coach we need to uh, uh, keep that uh, uh, respect individuals, uh, 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 the trait, and not to disclose and things like that. So, uh, basically, don't uh, spread the bad uh, of, uh, of one person to the other. Keep it with yourself. Um, that is what we had discussed, and then we moved on to discussing about that agreeing on boundaries. I think uh, uh, we were talking about the scope of uh, whatever the work that is. So and. Uh, 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 regardless of what the situation is, we should not be elaborating on the, um, just take the scope and uh, uh, just to, um, uh, you know, uh, please someone, things like that should not happen. So that is what we were being discussing. And then just then <laughs> we were called out to join the main room. Okay. Um, Jen, can I add some other points to Please do, Pradeep. Yeah, thank you. So first of all, we thought like this is the first time we are hearing about a code of ethics for an agile coach. So we are surprised. Oh, is there something existing in the market somewhere? It's been defined as code of ethics. Uh, invariably, knowing it or unknowingly, we'll be following many of the things. But uh, we have seen this as a framework or say as a slide for the first time. Thank you for that, Shane. Um, mm -hmm. And um, some of the things like uh, the uh, boundary. Uh, what you should be doing, what should be, if there is a question comes from people on architecture or technical side, and you are not sure or you're not, not quite expert in that area, don't act like you know everything and try to answer possibly the best way to say that. I'm sorry, I do not know the right person to contact this, this XYZ, as maybe somebody from the architecture team who can contact those person. I think we should uh, um, concise our responsibility, make sure that we, you know, we are not overstepping, we are not misleading anybody, just don't act like you're an expert on everything. Just do the right thing and uh, direct to the right person whom they can solve those issues. That's additional point I wanted to add to it. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. All right. So let me tell you a little bit of the background of where this came from. And I'm sharing the, the link in the, in the chat. This is the uh, work. It is an initiative of the Agile Alliance. Myself and, oh, there were 32, 33 of us all together um, over the last year and a half have been working um, on coming up with what we feel and being very much inspired by the um, work done uh, in organizations like the International Coach Federation and so forth, the ICF. Uh, what are, what is ethical behavior for agile coaching. 
And uh, at Agile India last year, we presented the first draft of this code of ethics. Um, it has gone on from that first draft and it is now a published version one of the code. And on the mural board, you uh, below that graphic, that image, is a link to the PDF that is the full um, code of ethical conduct, including the preamble and the, the text that we're going to go through short, shortly. But the, the preamble puts that, um, the context around it. And this is new. It's, uh, it was only launched uh, as a formal thing um, in the, well, what did we, June, July, we finalized that, that code. And we're hoping that more and more agile coaches around the world, and more, most importantly, organizations that employ agile coaches will align with and require of their coaches that they abide by this. And, and I'm gonna read out now, and, and again, uh, on the mural board, uh, if you, just come to frame number two, the code of ethical conduct. This is the core uh, set of words in there. So for each of those nine topics, we have a number of I will statements. And it starts as an ethical agile coach, I commit myself to the following. Number one, confidentiality and information security. I will protect information shared with me and will not disclose it without agreement or legal reason. Number two, acting within my ability. I will be open and transparent about my skills and experience, and I will not claim to have abilities or knowledge that I do not have. I will be open with the client if I believe they need another form of professional help, if I am not the right coach for them introspection and continuing professional development. I will engage with a peer group or mentor to explore ethical and other challenges in my agile coaching work. I will seek to improve my self-awareness and effectiveness through introspection and professional development. Number four, navigating conflicts of interest. I will be transparent about any potential conflicts of interest with all who might be affected and I will not act with dishonor. Uh, there's a question, Mahesh. No, I'm not sharing the screen, but it is in that mural board link. Um, I, can, can, I can share my screen if, if that would be useful. So we're, I was at number four, navigating conflicts of interest. I will be transparent about any potential conflict of interest with all who might be affected, and I will not act with dishonor. I will, would, will offer to withdraw from a relationship if a conflict cannot be resolved, cannot be addressed. Ensuring value in the relationship, number five, I will ensure that the relationship is value, valuable and I will not extend it unnecessarily or create dependencies that extend the relationship. I will be open with the client if I believe the value in the relationship is declining. Number six, social responsibility, including diversity and inclusion. I will seek opportunities to bring different voices to the conversation, and I will not condone, allow, or perpetuate discrimination in any form. I will strive to leave society better than I found it by both my action and inaction. Agreeing on boundaries. I will ensure that we have agreed upon scope, have an agreed upon scope, even if it evolves. I will work with the client to understand their needs rather than impose my own solutions. I will challenge an organization that is pursuing purposes at odds with the Agile Manifesto's values and principles. Resist the abuse of power. I will not abuse my power to influence others for personal gain. I will challenge the abuse of power by others. And responsibility to the profession. I will uphold the reputation of the agile coaching profession. I will challenge and not condone unethical behavior in others. 
and I will attribute others' ideas appropriately and avoid the appearance that they are mine. So those are the nine, uh, the, the 18 statements uh, falling into nine categories that we as a, as a working group um, came up with as these are statements of ethical behavior that we expect that ethical agile coaches will adhere to and will follow. What I'd like to do now, and this is to move to the, the third frame in there, the what will be hard frame. We're gonna put you back into your breakout rooms. And in your rooms, I want you to think about, and please put post-it notes onto this frame. What will be hard for you as an agile coach in upholding these ethical behaviors? Because this isn't about um, lightweight and easy stuff. This is hard stuff. And when we come back, we're going to go even deeper into what, are, what do some of these behaviors look like? And that's where we're going to spend a, quite a chunk of time. But for now, uh, we'll put you into breakout rooms for another eight minutes. And we'll reopen the same breakout rooms. And fill in the what will be hard. Welcome back, folks. Again, I'd like to hear from each room. I see that you've identified specific topics, but what were some of the things that you spoke about in your groups that indicated that, that you came up with? Why would this be hard? Why are these, these things not just, of course, we can do this. Okay, anyone else from breakout one wants to go ahead or shall I? Yeah, yeah. Shall I? Oh, sure, sure. Please go ahead. Looks like Mahesh might have frozen. Is it? Yeah, I think. Mahesh, can you hear us? Okay. Uh, meanwhile, Mahesh joins, maybe I'll cover a few of them. Is that all right? Yeah, 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 we can hear. Yes. Okay, Mahesh, please go ahead. Am I audible? Yes, we can hear you now, yeah. Sorry, uh, looks like uh, not sure network issue. Uh, I'll disable the video and speak. Is it okay? Yeah, please do. Yep. All right. So in our group, uh, Shane, uh, we uh, spoke about some areas, uh, you know, uh, especially uh, why will I do uh, the two and seven, where, uh, uh, you know, when I, what are my boundaries, my capabilities and skills are known to me as an agile coach, uh, which is way within my circle of control. When it comes to operating within boundaries, uh, sometimes it's a discovery process with the client because some clients, uh, you know, fairly understand what to expect and what not to expect from the coach. Uh, but sometimes uh, we have also seen cases, as you know, that, uh, hey, you guys are agile professionals and you are not uh, truly being agile yourself you are operating within your boundaries. So we have heard weirder uh, statements sometimes so that uh, being able to uh, operate and uh, work within that boundaries uh, is a process, a discovery process where the client should be in absolute alignment with the coach to understand what are those limitations. And if we needed to seek more support, we need to be uh, pragmatic and uh, receptive about that. Uh, so it's not about uh, uh, the coach's inabilities, but who can really be the best person to talk to in a given scenario. 
that's one thing we spoke of the second area i think some of our members had a little bit struggle to understand the line item number 6 uh, which is inclusion and uh, diversity what do we really mean about it uh, and then i think one thing we spoke about is uh, uh, you know if you have people who are for and against the transformation or any initiative you do do you only invite a selected bunch of people to have a conversation and leave all the resistive people outside the room as opposed to having the elephant within the room so is that a subtle indication of uh, inclusion and diversity so those are some topics that we spoke about i would let my team members add on if they want thank you uh, the other thing is on working within the boundaries um so the point 2 point 7 and point 8 we felt it are interrelated and uh, somewhere it will it will overlap or it will go more or less actually so if you don't have the ability then resistance will come resistance will impact the boundaries so a uh, lot of cases uh, it's very difficult to put the boundary that's where Uh, we see a we see a problem right so uh, setting up boundary then the question will come we are paying you so why don't you do this also right mm-hmm. uh, a process coach to go and do an engineering coach uh, it becomes very difficult mm excellent thank you very much room 2 Uh, so i'm all here so in the room two we were discussing about similar points like uh, basically 2 3 and 7 uh, so in the 7 we were talking about uh, like when we are just starting the transformation the things are not in place so because of the given uncertainties even if the requirements evolve the scope evolves it would be very difficult to agree on the scope uh, there would be a lot of push coming from the business and other stakeholders so it would be very difficult to agree on the scope in the beginning then as the maturity improves over a period of time uh, Uh, things may uh, be in place so as coaches it may be difficult to uphold to that in the beginning although in principle like we were agreeing to all the principles that as coaches definitely we we should be able to live up to all of them but there would definitely be challenges so we were discussing more on the challenges in different contexts that could be coming in uh, so definitely with respect to the scope uh, it will be very difficult to live up to them second was a very interesting point on the introspection and uh, the continuing professional development so some of the points that came up were that as we are uh, building our careers as we are doing the coaching on the ground sometimes it may really be difficult uh, uh, to actually get access to the good peer network or the mentors uh, within that specific organization you are working in definitely there are external forums and other things you can you can go into but in those specific actual real scenarios uh, i think people felt uh, we may not be able to live up to that Uh, if you are working in a given client organization you have only two or three coaches you really don't have that kind of support so it could be somewhat challenging when you are working in that kind of a context and uh, on the point of acting within my ability uh, so sometimes it could be difficult uh, to be very honest and transparent uh, to the customers because if you are suppose uh, providing a consulting and coaching to a given organization and uh, something comes up you may just jump in and provide some of your recommendations even if you do not have the full skill set that could be to get future business that could be to ensure the credibility of your organization so in the real world at times uh, although ethically definitely that's not the right thing to do but in the real world sometimes you may cross that line and uh, sometimes you may just uh, go a little ahead than where you should go into so sometimes uh, you may not be able to uphold uh, 100% on that so this is where we were when we came back Excellent. Thank you very much. Yes, the real world gets in the way so much, doesn't it? Thank you. Room 3. Uh, we discussed on two points navigating conflict of interest and uh, agreeing on a boundaries. These are the navigating uh, the issue with the navigating conflict of interest is one of the practical example we discussed is when we join as a consultant and we do the assessment and say that team is still have a waterfall mindset and other things. what i and some discuss that uh, we say that the organization or leadership doesn't agree because they go and say that we are practicing agile for a couple of years we are matured and all those things 
so it is very tough to go ahead and uh, say that uh, because it is uh, where you are working with them or they are the sponsors so conflict of interest will be there always that's the one point we talked about it how do we uh, handle such things diplomatically sometime so the second one we talked about agreeing on a boundaries uh, agreeing on boundaries sometime uh, if you are working for a client and client say that you have to do this there is no as such conversations to say that agree on these boundary lines what we are doing you cannot go and say that we don't have that capabilities or anything so that's a boundary uh, if you start coaching and uh, company is ready to involve you from defining what need to be done it may be possible if it is predefined it is very tough to work with the boundaries so these are the two point we discussed uh, anybody from our group want to share something go ahead looks like no thank you shane thank you and room 4 if i may uh, bharat here and others can add to it so i think for us what i see is all of the nine things are extremely challenging in its own way and all of them require a lot of consciousness within yourself to decide where do you think you are actually going crossing the line and where you are not it's a lot of self uh, reflection needed on each one of them but especially the two things that we thought were big challenging one of them was uh, the second one which is uh, acting within your ability now most of the time we as a human being it's very difficult for us to say something that i don't know even if you know little or how much where you put that boundary it's very very difficult and the same goes with the conflict of interest that was another area even there one at on one side your mind might be convincing no this is not really you are getting into conflict of interest or this is not really you know this area quite well even if you know it little less so oh, both of them require a lot of conscious efforts for us to put our interest aside and say yes i think i'm going to say uh, this is not my boundary or this is not my ability or this requires this an additional skill or this is something that is going to be a conflict of interest and i am going to withdraw from this so that's the two things that we felt uh, were a bit challenging for us uh, maybe others can add if if i missed anything no thanks parath i was wondering how do you speak without your headphone in your or over your ear you cannot hear what you are speaking isn't it <laughs> Right. Yeah, we we heard you clearly, Bharat. Thank you very much. So, thank you, folks. Yeah, and it's when we start to dig into these things, they do get hard. And one of the the things that we the the working group who came up with this said, well, yeah, it's great to have a code of ethics, but what does this mean in practice? So the other thing that we added. Uh, on the website and uh, and in this mural board, and and again I will share my screen so you can see where I'm pointing at. There is there are nine boxes on the board down the bottom, uh, and if you use the outline, you can see them. They're numbered one to nine, and for each of the topics. we've come up with what we've called ethics scenarios so these are stories of uh, and they're real world situations that have been sanitized so there's no organization names and things like that but these are examples where people have seen behaviors and we've tried to explain them in terms of what is appropriate and what is inappropriate and the ones that were really hard or what we've come up with as a gray area it could be right it could be wrong what is the context so for each of those nine areas we have at least two or three individual scenarios and some of them we've had more um so social responsibility we had quite a few agreeing on boundaries resisting the abuse of power 
and responsibility to the profession. And whoops, I, I thought I'd locked that. Um, let me fix that. Let's move that back there and lock it. <laughs> ah, sorry. So it can't be moved around easily. What I'm gonna ask you to do now, and this is gonna be a 20 minute in the breakout room. Um, we're gonna create the, let me just see how many people we have. We have 20, 22, so 20 participants uh, going into breakout rooms. Um, we will create three, uh, six, seven. We'll create seven breakout rooms, uh, 21, 19, six, six breakout rooms. Um, sorry to, Monica, so can we have six, recreate six breakout rooms? That's gonna be about uh, three, maybe four people in each breakout room. And your breakout room number will indicate the topic area we want you to go to. So breakout room one will be uh, area one, confidentiality. Breakout two, room two will be acting within your ability. Uh, three, introspection, continuing professional development, and so forth. And in your breakout rooms, what I want you to do is um, read the scenarios, discuss them, and then think about what would you add are there situations and scenarios, examples that you, that your group would like to add to this space here? And we will have, yeah, we'll have 20 minutes in the breakout rooms for this. Welcome back, folks. All right, well, how was that activity? Did you have fun? Was it interesting? It was, it was thought provoking, yeah. Thought provoking. That's what I was hoping for. <laughs> so I'm going to do a quick round robin and I'm going to ask each group to, to just give no more than one minute what happened and what was, what did you get out of doing that activity? So if we can start with room one, looking at confidentiality and information security, how did that go? Okay, so I'll I'll go with the permission of Atulya and uh, Sudarshan. Um, so we kind of concluded. Um, uh, all right, we could come to a conclusion. Uh, the scenario was that uh, there was a coachy who had uh, breached an information security, uh, you know, policy, and uh, what was the conflict, so to speak, of the coach, right? Uh, so there were multiple points discussed. Uh, so essentially, we were debating whether. Uh, so, so the scenario was uh, about that the coach actually went ahead and reported. But what else should have been done? I think uh, we concluded that uh, even the coachy, I mean, the coach should have let the coachy know that you know uh, this, you know, that he is he or she is going ahead and reporting this uh, because of the because there is also a, a commitment to the to the coaching contract as well as you know the legal uh, obligation. And uh, I think that's what we concluded with. Um, so we, we took some time to come to that conclusion because of the audio issues I had. So I, I solved that by leaving the room altogether and coming back. So I think that's, uh, so if you want to add guys, uh, Sudarshan, Atul, if you want to add. Yeah, so um, uh, that's what I think uh, uh, Narayan and me were discussing, wherein we had a situation, say, wherein um, if the coachy has leaked some uh, sensitive shareholder data or uh, you know, some data in the conversation. Now, ethically, that's uh, not the right thing to do. You're not supposed to leak your company reports or something before time. Now, he might have told you that in confidence, uh, thinking that you may not uh, you know, take it seriously. Now, it, it's known, somehow it comes notice to the corporate security team who reach out to you. So, you are not supposed to disclose the data which the coachy told you because he told you in confidence. But at the same time, you know what he did is incorrect. 
and there is a chance that he would have you know told it to someone else so you you reported but what we concluded that if you are doing that you should morally speaking i think you should also tell the coachy that hey you know what you did was wrong and i know this is confidential and you know we had a uh, understanding but just since it was wrong i have reported it um and i'm informing you have done the same so you know he is also informed and he can take further action um and you're not just being you know just going behind his back you know you're being <laughs> clear that i had reported this because this was the scenario the security team is aware and now they can resolve it mutually uh, is what i think we concluded that's what we reached thank you yeah the and these are difficult scenarios so thank you room 2 Uh, so we we were discussing about acting within your ability scenarios so we thought uh, you know all the three examples for appropriate we discuss those uh, so first scenario uh, in a nutshell uh, you know it is a client has a need of uh, some tool and uh, as a, as a agile coach i don't really have knowledge about that tool so i don't i won't be able to uh, uh, coach uh, for that tool so uh, i mean uh, the scenario one says that uh, we, we i i should try to bring uh, you know take the customer into uh, confidence and uh, try to have a partnership where you both can learn and how to use the technique together so that is how the example one says we thought it is appropriate uh, uh, the second second example is an extension to this where you uh, offer to have another coach uh, for that for the tool and uh, try to get the work done Uh, so we just wanted to add probably you know we can uh, so so as a agile coach probably i would prefer to have some technical guy who knows that tool uh, to do some pocs around goals of the customer and then present that uh, gain the customer's uh, confidence based on that poc and then go ahead with setting up the team and you know bringing in all the other things and uh, then get it done so that is what we thought that is what we want to add probably uh, discuss around pocs and presentation of those pocs to customer to get the confidence going uh, the next example was uh, around uh, an interview situation where uh, you are uh, interviewed uh, for for uh, by by a uh, different organization and the uh, the person is asking you to share some secrets around the way ahead from your parent company and they are pressurizing you Uh, whether uh, i mean to to share those secrets and that is where uh, you decide to uh, turn off the uh, interview just come out of it so uh, we thought i mean that is correct ethics wise we should not really share any uh, secrets or anything the confidential information but uh, as a as a agile coach probably when you are working as an enabler uh, to you know get both the parties uh, uh, working for their betterment is there any other way wherein you can present you know the benefits or stuff or, or you know interview is basically selling your own uh, stuffs so is there any other way wherein you can bring that balance uh, and don't really share the confidential information but still give them a confidence that you can you know you are you you can work with their goals and uh, you will help them to achieve their goals as well uh, so you should try that first before you know just uh, switching off the interview uh, so that is what we thought because the example says that you just come out of that interview because they are asking you or pressurizing you uh, yeah and the uh, rest two examples are for inappropriate uh, uh, behaviors uh, so Uh, where you are overselling your experience and sudesh sorry, sorry. with uh, being very conscious of time so sorry, no is there anything that uh, that that you would summarize from your group's perspective just uh, around that i mean, I mean as a child coach probably you need to go uh, one step ahead think about balance and uh, try to uh, look at the benefit of both the parties who are involved and then get the solutions that is something that is thought Right. Thank you. And group three, and again, being very conscious of time, less than a minute. Could uh, we discuss around a couple of areas for introspection and continuing professional development scenarios? Uh, so one that we found was that external community support, and uh, I mean, it is that we are part of external knowledge sharing community where uh, uh, 
the team members, uh, I mean, the members especially experience, uh, share their experiences as well as the different challenges what they have learned. And uh, this provides a platform to learn and brainstorm different approaches uh, that we take towards a common problem, as well as also it helps in terms of introspection about, you know, uh, what we are doing wrong uh, or what we can do better. So that, that was one example what we discussed. There are a couple more uh, that we scenarios what we discussed was one uh, that was again uh, related to mentoring and peer support. So it is more about as an agile coach, uh, we have uh, when we are starting a new transformation and gradually ramping up around uh, 25 to 30 uh, as a coaches in a larger organization when you talk about around uh, probably uh, 500 teams. And then uh, you see that over the over the time there have been some inconsistencies in the thought process alignment so, and the expectations. Richard, if, I, if I if I can again bring you to the what did your group take out of this? Just because I am conscious that we've only got three minutes left now. <laughs> okay, so uh, as a group, what we felt is the importance of the knowledge sharing sessions or getting alignment across. Uh, you know the importance of regular meetups uh, for be it external or internal uh, that helps us in being on uh, on the same page and also bring the consistency that was one point um, what we discussed i think I, I could change this. Uh, amol do you want to add anything to that yeah actually i rejoined i'm not sure if i'm audible now uh, so you are. Okay, okay, great. So the basic theme was basically to support the peer uh, support and the professional development. So if the leadership and other themes are not really supporting and going against it, uh, so that was inappropriate. And basically things which are supporting the peer support and professional development, multiple scenarios that were there. So basically we need to promote the uh, professional development of our coaches as well as peer support so that we can build the community over a period of time. So that is the basic theme. And we are three or four examples. Wonderful. Thanks, Amal, and I have to move on. So group five, very quickly. Um, so as a group, uh, myself and Manchu, uh, we just gone through the uh, uh, scenarios mentioned, it makes sense. So we understand that the importance of uh, conflict, managing the conflict of interest, otherwise it can end up uh, troubling the contracts for the agile coach companies. It can uh, damage many relationships. A couple of scenarios we come up with is one inappropriate scenario we thought is like, uh, let's say you are a consultant coach for a company and you are also taking up a concern for a different company. It's a competitor for the first company you are coaching. Right? And how is it um, um, inappropriate is that there is a chance that you might be leaking information which is confidential across competitors. And uh, why is it gray? Because if your contract is not saying that we cannot work like that, it can be a gray aspect. And Manchu, if you want to just quickly add upon your uh, another scenario, I think that will conclude our. Uh, yeah, Pradeep. Uh, so when you are uh, uh, the one of the scenario I am talking about is I'm uh, when you work with the PMO and you say that team doesn't have a mindset or anything, they may not agree with that because they have come from a waterfall mindset for a long time. So those those conflict will be always there. Uh, how do you negotiate? How do you can uh, put your thoughts? That's the conflict. It is a conflict. How to deal with that? It is a many options will be there for that. Thank we you. discussed and on that. Okay. Wonderful group five. Very quickly. Um, anyone else wants to go ahead? Okay. Pro probably, uh, Shane, if I quickly uh, say what pro what was the learning is uh, because we had a topic around ensuring values in the relationship and what scenarios we came across, right? Some of them uh, did come from the personal experience as well. And uh, if I just want to sum it up, I think uh, sometimes even selfish reasons uh, can come in between, right? To... to uh, uh, to ensure that we are giving a value, right? So that is a, that is where we came with a few inappropriate as well as gray areas. And on top of it, I think nothing is black and white, right? So <laughs> we did come across some gray areas where we could not understand what should or could have happened. So, 
I mean, okay. just in interest of time, I would say that. Thank you. And group group six. Yeah, in the interest of time, I'll, I'll get started. So for us, again, it's the same thing. Our topic was diversity and inclusion. And I'm really proud that today in, in the industry, there are a lot of uh, efforts being made by many organizations to nurture this or to bring as much as awareness as possible. The key area for us is, as everybody mentioned, there are, you could at least identify the good and bad, but grays are very difficult. So uh, especially for a team who has been there for quite long, it's very difficult while they're making some communications, whether it could be un inappropriate. And especially when the new members comes in, how do we understand, am I making sense or am I stepping into this some area? So the key takeaway for us is, can we be constantly conscious as a coach to identify such instances and maybe have a one-on-one -on -one communications and bring that kind of confidence for those guys who are being feeling, you know, they could be a victim of the situation. So just to keep it short. Wonderful. Thank you very much. So thank you, folks. Um, we are at the end of our time box. I'm going to share my screen one more time and just focus in on two things on the mural board. One is this quote from, and there is the, the author, Eliza Yudovsky. You took Kotskov, you are personally responsible for becoming more ethical than the society you grew up in. And as, our, as agile coaches, we, this really is something we want to take to heart. And then we've got a, a frame on the mural board that you can access. What's missing? Please tell us, put things up there that should be in our code of ethical conduct or whether it's the scenarios that we're missing. Give us this feedback. We want this to be owned by the community, which is why we've done it under the auspices of the Agile Alliance. And if you go to the Agile Alliance link there, um, which is in the, in the mural board as well, you will be able to see um, a lot more of the work that we've done. Those scenarios are all there. The, the code is there, you can share it. Uh, in the mural board also, you can just download the PDF of the code. So you're welcome to it. And thank you all very much. I really appreciate your spending the time with me this afternoon, morning, evening, day. <laughs>